Well, they're still going. Gas prices have hit at least $4 across the country. According to new data released by AAA, Oklahoma, Georgia, and Kansas were the last three states with average prices under $4 until they crossed the line this week. And there are signs that gas is going to get even more expensive. You won't believe this. In Washington state, they're preparing for $10 a gallon gas. That is according to the Daily Mail. The national gas station chain 76 has begun reprogramming pumps to prepare for $10 gallon fuel. Woof. This comes as the nation's average is at a whopping $4.75, $4.75 a gallon, almost twice the $2.41 average during the Trump administration's last month in office. Oof. Yikes. Oof. That is pretty bad. So they have to move the decimal point because when you look at the gas, the gas pump, right? So it'll say like $5, you know, here in California where I am, we're at $6, $6, you know, 6.065. So they're going to have to move the decimal point at those 76 stations to make it so that they can actually go for that $10 a gallon gas. That is outrageous. I yeah, I drove um, I drove to the studio this morning and I've been I've been taking a scooter to the studio most mornings cuz the weather's finally nice and I like the scooters. Uh, but I drove in this morning, and uh, I hadn't driven the car in a couple days, and I noticed that we're, I'm, I'm, almost, I'm almost empty, so I'm going to have to fill up on the way home today. So I, do, I, I haven't done it in a while, so I have no idea what the price is right now in D.C. I think it's, I think it's north of the four, uh, the, the, the middling four. I think it's upper beyond that, but I'm, I'm going to find out. Not looking forward to that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm a non-driver, uh, but uh, gas costing more than the minimum wage in m much of the country does not sound like a good look. Uh, no, <laughs> not at all. I mean, good point. And I guess in Washington, they've even run out of gasoline in certain places. And so they, the, the prices have already gone way up. You know, one of the reasons why they're having such high price gas is because of, of running out of supplies. Mm. So I've seen photographs on Twitter, people tweeting it out. You know, pictures of the gas pump in the $8 a gallon range. It's just, how can people afford this? And then with people going back to work, I mean, I, I would imagine a lot of people are saying to their employers, I just want to, I'm just going to work from home again. And it's not about the pandemic. I just, the, it's the gas pandemic that we're dealing yeah. with. Yeah. Well, let's turn to the markets that have some really telling signs for how America's families are facing inflation. Targets reported a stunning 52% drop in profit for the last quarter, signaling that America's families putting major hold on spending as prices continue to soar. Even Walmart, who is famous for the low prices, sounding the alarm on inflation as their stocks hit the lowest level since the 1980s. According to CNBC, rich Wall Street analysts didn't expect Walmart and Target to take such a tumble, but it's actually pretty simple. America's lower income and working families have less money to spend and are no longer going to Target or Walmart to spend money on products they want did. This seems to yeah. be obvious to me. The, the big brains econo economists that come on TV uh, are very quick to tell us that the economy does well when rich people have more money to trickle down to the rest of us, but seem to always miss the bit where the products that are being made have to be purchased by someone and money cannot right. circulate through the economy unless people are earning wages and are able to actually spend those wages. And Target and Walmart, I think, are saying that the items that are being purchased less right now are those big ticket items. So people aren't buying things like televisions at the moment like they were maybe with some of their money that they were getting, maybe some of that stimmy money they were going and spending it on a new television or something along those lines. But now they're not. So that's why they're saying that they're taking a giant dip. It's those mm. big ticket items. Yeah, well, when asked about the stock market, Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre said that's not something we keep an eye on every day. Uh, <laughs> I think what? it probably is. It's something yeah. someone in the Biden administration, I'm sure, has the job of telling the president or his top advisors or his chief of staff what the stock market is doing every day. I think that's I probably a certainty. So straight up, straight up not true. I, I, is there a disinformation board that can 
sound off on that sound bite, maybe correct that one. Any fact checkers out there? You know, all, all, all busy uh, keeping uh, baby formula, uh, homemade baby formula out of the hands of starving uh, kids. Okay, okay, no big, no big deal. No she's, big deal. she's having a rough first week. Look, I'm, I'm glad that no one Trial was pointing a, a camera on me during my first week of work, although I guess maybe that's not the case in, in, this, in this show, in this yeah. job. But look, I, I have some sympathy for tripping up on camera, but this is a mess. I, and I don't understand why she isn't just a little bit better on her feet in response to a question like that, just anticipating a little bit how a comment like that is going to be read. At the end of the day, of course, spin. Spin, that's your entire job. You know, of course we are concerned about the average American's ability to afford uh, basic goods and we are working on a number of things to make that easy. Of course, we just rolled out this intervention to get baby formula flown in and we're working on other things as well. Stay tuned, I'll get back to you next week. Clearly they hired the wrong woman. <laughs> I'm not applying. <laughs> I mean, you know what? Maybe she's being honest. Maybe the Biden administration isn't t keeping an eye on the stock market. Maybe they're not paying attention to any of this. Maybe she's just telling the truth. And maybe that's refreshing, actually, rather than a spin master, right? I mean, I mean, is this, I, is this the most incompetent or self-sabotaging administration in the history of presidency? Like, if every if gas is at the cost of gas is astronomically high, people aren't buying things because it's too expensive at Target's and even Walmart. They're they're going yeah. to like they're going to get wiped out. No one will. This is no one will vote for Democrats if this is the reality in November, and if this is the reality um, uh, two years after that. Like, do, why don't they understand that yeah. they have to fix this problem? I know they they the problem they want to have to fix is Ukraine for some reason, but that's not the problem people want them to fix. People want them to fix right. the high prices. And per the poll I cited in my radar today, majorities of Americans actually want big solutions to these kinds of problems. People, I think, would be really excited about a can, uh, an administration that said, OK, gas prices are high. We're facing a climate crisis. Maybe this is the time we actually really invest, not $40 billion in Ukraine, but at least we, we can do that, invest substantively in helping people transition to electric vehicles that can help them mm. get more out of a, a out of a gallon of gas. Maybe it's time to actually revisit some of the very popular programs that we had during the pandemic that did give working class people inflection and in, 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 in injections of money so they could actually take them to the stores and buy things, whether it's baby food or TV that helps the economy go. You know, it, the trickle down stuff is over. The incrementalism is over. People are over all of it. They want to just see that the, the government is doing something. And Joe, I will not use executive authority for anything Biden is basically shouting out to the world, I'm, I have, I, I'm impotent and can't do anything about anything. And the party is going to pay for it in the fall. I agree with you that people are looking for real bold solutions right now, for sure. One thing, though, is that, and I, I've read this before, uh, not only just you mentioning it, but people saying, you know, what is Joe Biden's plan? Is he trying to just allow gas prices to just go through the roof until people give up and say, all right, fine, I'll buy an electric vehicle. All right, fine. You know, I'll go and I'll, I'll get that Prius. Because I have to tell you, it, you can't get your hands on one. Mm. So even if that was the plan, you can't get your hands on one. The, the car dealership is constantly trying to buy my Prius from me mm. at, at, at like worth way more than what mm. it's actually worth. They're trying to buy it. They can't get their hands on used cars, especially of the hybrid or electric version. Tesla can't pump cars out fast enough. Mm. There's they're, they're just not on the market. So I don't even know what their plan is when it comes to that. So that idea that even that I, you know, that I, I've seen some Republican lawmakers kind of throw out there like, oh, Joe Biden's just trying to get everybody to buy a hybrid or an electric car. That's not actually even realistic. So even if that were the plan, that can't be the plan. It's not going to work. So what is the plan? And that they don't have a plan for us. Instead, it's just, hey, be grateful you're not in Ukraine. I mean, I mean that seems I to be what they keep telling us. And I do, I do have to mention this, right? The Biden administration, the Interior Department recently canceled um, oil leases that would, I, I think, at least the very least show the people that they're committed to doing something to try to bring down you know, even if it wasn't going to make that much of a difference to bring down the price of oil and they canceled those. Well, I mean, those things Why aren't going to make a difference because the timeline on actually getting new oil wells yeah. to produce is so far in the future, far enough that it's buttoned up against our climate deadlines to, you know, saving the planet. Maybe it would make but a I'm difference also, for the next time this happens. Well, oh, yeah. OK. Well, I think the, I the longer term solution is having, you know, energy independence in the in the form of clean oil. But I'm also struck by, you know, one of Joe Biden's plans in the original Build Back Better was to electrify the school bus 
Force, which not only is a, a lot of the cars on the road, uh, represents a significant amount of traffic on the road, but also is a, a health issue for kids. There's all of these studies about the air quality diminishing around children because of these buses. The plan went down to 3% of school buses being electrified and then got completely cut from Build Back Better. Now, this is going to be an issue for municipalities who have to fill these big trucks up and cart kids back and forth. Now that schools are back open again, this has as a problem with far reaching implications and you're not going to be able to cut around the corners of this. I say, look, let's hope Elon is focused equally <laughs> on ramping up production of electric vehicles as he is on this Twitter I mean, buy. We finally, we finally <laughs> got Democrats to recommit to the idea that children should actually be sent to school. So, so of course, it's, <laughs> I, it's not surprising at all yeah. that there's very little innovation in the school bus space again for you know, until very recently the Democratic position on, on children in schools was that they should learn from home or not at all. Not to give Joe Biden or the administration any excuses, but right now we also still do have a supply chain problem. Mm -hmm. So one of the issues going on, for example, you know, that a lot of these schools that have been giving some some stimulus money, they haven't even spent, I think 93% of the stimulus money sent to schools has not been spent yet. Mm -hmm. And here in, in Los Angeles, the LA County Public Schools haven't spent a dime of it. Their reason, what they say is, what are we supposed to spend it on? So we can't spend it on, for exam example, uh, ventilation for the school system because we can't get the manufacturing. We can't mm. get the, uh, the, the supply chain is, we, is a problem. We need to be so, making more things in America. Right. You cannot get around that. We need to be making, we, I, I mean, agree. I think it was you earlier in a segment, um, Kim, who was talking about the, the fact that we just are not, um, that we can't, we're not stimulating the economy and making jobs at home anymore. Like this, this is the fundamental issue that everything is stemming it's from. It's never going to happen. It was, it's it was fantasy. corporate, it was it corporate is, elites yeah. trying to we skim off to. the top by yeah. putting everything never. overseas and also having no storage capacity and warehousing anything at home because they don't even want to pay to store surplus materials so that when something like this happens, we at least have a little bit on, on deck. And if we're worried about yes. what happens next down the pike, Robbie, like you have to start changing how fantasy. we do things. We will, and it's never it is gonna a happen, matter of again. national security, it Robbie. It, we have they to can't, do it. The government is incapable of changing the regulatory policies that made it prohibitively expensive to do manufacturing in this country. They will well, never, not with they that will attitude. never reverse right. them. They'll never, they won't do it. They won't do it. It's not a stump speech, They're Robbie. <laughs> You're not ready for anything. <laughs> just, just honesty. All right. Uh, well, this, this has been fun, guys, and we will have more rising for you after this.